things I've heard about Herr Beethoven have made me very anxious to hear some of his music. I've even gone so far as to get up as early as this to come and listen to his uh, trios. No, oh, I know him very little, but I can tell you this. His manners are rather rough and ready, and he isn't very careful about his appearance. But the other morning I listened to him improvising on the piano for over an hour. Absolutely divine. People say that he's terribly proud. Oh, his motto must be, the first place or nowhere at all. And that's exactly what he says. When I asked him what he thought about Mozart, he replied, in a monarchy, you know who the king is. <laughs> Didn't he say to someone who was congratulating him, ever since childhood it has been my intention to do great things? No, his childhood wasn't very gay, was it, Count Wallstein? If I tell you a few details about his childhood, they'll be enough to give you a general picture. Ludwig was born at Bonn, where his father was court musician. At four years old, the child was seated in front of a piano and made to work at it. Really to work at it. When he was eight years old, the young musician gave his first concert. And when he was 11, he took an examination to try and gain admission into the court orchestra. He passed this examination and acquitted himself so well afterwards that the prince elector gave him a yearly allowance of a hundred thalers and sent him to the finest teachers. Then he took him as his personal pianist and now Ludwig accompanies the prince wherever he goes. Oh, I don't think that sounds a very unhappy life, Count. It certainly doesn't explain his moodiness. You mustn't forget all the work that has gone into bringing him to his present position. It's true that he's extraordinarily gifted, but being gifted isn't everything, and he's had to work extremely hard. You never know, perhaps he wanted to play with the other boys when he was little. Then, when his father took to drinking, there was nothing but disorder and poverty at home. Not very pleasant for a boy accustomed to the wealth and distinction of court life. Enough to turn anyone bitter, in fact. Didn't he spend a lot of time with the Broining? Yes, he did, as a matter of fact. That's where I met him. He says that the only happy moments of his childhood were those spent with Frau von Broining and her children. Frau von Breining is a gentle, charming, and cultivated woman. And when Ludwig's mother died, she took her place entirely. She gave him a certain amount of culture and was very understanding when he had his moods and fits of anger. Why, well, even at that age, he was very proud then. Beethoven was born to be a conqueror. He knows he's a genius, and that because he's a genius, he must prevail. His background was only modest, and so... He's got to make us, the great ones, bend before him. For in his eyes, our only merit is the very slender one of birth. Hmm. And his ideas aren't going to be changed by Prince Lishnovsky, who's been looking after him and spoiling him for the past year or so. <laughs> Are you pleased with my composition, Master? Oh, you do nothing like anyone else. I've taught you the rules of musical architecture, but you treat them in your own way. If what I write isn't according to the rules, then it's against the rules, that's all. Oh, yes. You'll never sacrifice a beautiful idea to a tyrannical law. You're right. You're like a man with several heads and several hearts. There'll always be strange and unexpected things in your music. For you yourself are strange and unexpected, as well as being somber. Master, the men who rise above others are those who rely on power. And that's what I rely on, power. Well, I understand that you have great admiration for that young French general who was making a name for himself. Bonaparte, he and I are made of the same stuff. He's fighting for his people's freedom. Music is my freedom. And I must fight for it alone. But I haven't yet accomplished any of the things of which I'm capable. Look at Bonaparte. He's the same age as I am. And see what he's done. Oh, well, perhaps one can learn to win a battle more quickly than one can learn to write a symphony. Oh, if I knew as much about strategy as I know about counterpoint, I'd beat him. <laughs> i 
heard anything so beautiful for a long time. Oh, this music is absolutely heavenly. A moonlit night in the country. Who are you dedicating it to, Master? Who is he dedicating it to? What a question to ask. Can't you see how Juliet is blushing? <laughs> Your Highness, mm -hmm. could I have a few words with you in private? Of course you can. Come this way. Julieta, you're a sly one. I'd like to bet he's going to ask you to marry him. That fellow never does anything like anybody else. Well, I think that he's in love with me and that he'd like to marry me. But are you in love with him? Well, I don't know. He's generous, sensitive and cultivated, but he's so ugly and he's terribly touchy. Reese. You've, you should know him better than anybody else. You've been his favorite pupil for years now. Heavens, don't ask me what he's like. If anybody makes a noise while he's giving me my music lesson, he gets up suddenly and throws all the books on the floor. Oh? You're only 16 years old, and he's 30 already. What'll you do? I'll do what my father tells me to do. But I think I'd prefer Count Gallenbeer. He dances so well. Beethoven's coming back. Uh-uh. He looks in a bad mood. I should have expected it, Reese. The only thing that counts with these people is nobility. A fine-sounding title is worth all the talent in the world, all the hard work, and even all the glory. Oh, I'd have worked a thousand times harder. To gild the ground beneath her feet. Julietta, my little flame. Nature is bursting with joy today. Why can't I give my soul to the joyful things in this world? Ludwig, has something happened? Count Giacardi has just refused to allow him to marry his daughter. Oh, poor fellow. Oh, that on top of everything else he's gone through on account of his... You mean his deafness? Yes. For years now he's been going through hell because of it. He's kept it a secret from everyone, hoping that it will be cured in time. What do you think about it, Doctor? Well, I've advised him to try several courses of treatment. He's got his eyes open for any new remedy that appears, but... I'm afraid... Let's go to his house. We ought not to leave him alone. Yes, that's true. Tell me something. You always go with him when he's visiting people. Hasn't anybody noticed that there's something wrong with his hearing? Well, he's so absent-minded, you know. And if he says or does anything queer, or if he doesn't reply when somebody asks him a question, it's put down to absent-mindedness. <laughs> when he's sitting at his piano, he lives in a world of his own. Mm -hmm. Nothing else matters. Ah, here we are at his house. Uh, Ludwig! Ludwig! No reply. Let's go in. Oh, what a mess. Stuff everywhere. Where can he be? Ah, here's a note. He's left for... Hyde is falling away from me. Just as the leaves fall from the trees in autumn. Since childhood, my mind and my heart have known the generous impulses of goodness. But for a number of years now, I have struggled against a complaint which will certainly take a long time to cure and which may even be incurable. I am obliged to cut myself off from men and resign myself to a solitary life. Were it not for my art, I would put an end to my days. But it is impossible for me to leave this world before accomplishing everything with which I feel I have been entrusted. If any man should one day read these words, a man oppressed with the same burdens as I am. 
let him take courage from the example of one who struggled for admission into the ranks of artists and the elite in the face of overwhelming difficulties. Oh, Providence, let me experience one day of joy. Only one day. To see you back, Ludwig. You shut yourself off from people even longer this time. I've been meditating. I've read Plutarch. I've learnt resignation from him. Resignation? <laughs> you resigned? Yes. But I've decided to stand up against the evil fate which is forever pursuing me. I'll drive my fist into destiny's ugly maw. Ah, Ludwig, I recognize you now. The fighter in you is not going to give in. To begin with, I'll make a public announcement about my deafness. I don't want it to be a secret any longer. I think you're very wise. It's the only way to stop any tittle-tattle. And at the same time, it'll show that your music's entirely independent. Have you been doing a lot of work? Some string quartets and some sonatas. But I've more work commissioned than I can keep up with. People don't bargain with me any longer. I state my price, and it's accepted without question. If I've got a friend who needs some help, and I haven't enough money at the time to do anything about it, all I've got to do is to settle down to work for a bit. And he's out of the wood in no time. And yourself? What about your big works? My second symphony's finished, and I've sketched out the third, the Eroica. A messenger from the Archduke Rudolf came this morning. Ah, Rudolf. I've been neglecting him a bit lately, uh, but he understands me very well. I'll dedicate my best works to him. The Emperor's brother is my best friend. murmur of streams. The smaller the stream, the lower the pitch of the note it makes. I 
Not so much his deafness which keeps him from hearing us, as his concentration on what he's doing. Look, he's scribbling something in a notebook. He's composing. What? Out here in the country? Yes, that's the way he goes about it. He goes out and absorbs all the impressions that he can recognize from nature. Then when he gets back home, he rushes to the piano. Herr Beethoven! Oh? Oh, good day to you. So you've come here to paint. You're right, too. This Viennese countryside is wonderful. That's where you get your best ideas. Well, I can understand that for a painter, but for a musician... It's only in the company of nature that I find myself thoroughly in harmony with the world. And when I work, I'm just like your painters. I've always got a picture before my mind's eye. Poetic vision. With poets... Visions transform themselves into words. With me, visions hum and sing until they're transformed into music. And one day, we'll hear a symphony where the rustle of the leaves in the wind replies to the song of the birds. We'll hear the murmur of a stream. We'll hear the crash of thunder after a sultry summer day. There'll be harvest songs country dances, the music that men make whenever work in the fields is finished. It will be called the Pastoral Symphony. Performance of new works by Herr Beethoven. Fifth Symphony, Sixth Symphony, Fourth Piano Concerto, Sanctus and Gloria in C Major, Fantasia for Piano and Orchestra, Improvisations of the Piano by Herr Beethoven. Well, there's at least four hours' music there. Is Beethoven conducting the orchestra? Don't be stupid, he's almost completely deaf. All the same, it is Beethoven who's conducting. He listens with his eyes. He knows every movement the musicians make. I saw him and I had to take some music to him. But he said it's his last public concert, his farewell concert. Are all his latest works to be heard at this concert? All except the Emperor Piano Concerto and a sonata he's going to dedicate to the Archduke. You seem to know everything about him. Is he married now? Oh, no. No, once he was engaged to Fräulein Teresa von Brunswick, then he was engaged to Fräulein Teresa Malfatti, but he's still a bachelor. Men like him are never lucky in love. I think he prefers his music to any woman in the world. That may be so, but his brothers make a pretty good thing out of his music. Have you seen all the stuff Johann, the chemist, bought for himself with the money he squeezed out of him? And there's Karl, who steals from him by arranging the sale of his music to his publishers. Oh, he knows all about their goings-on. But he says, after all, they are my brothers. They're scoundrels. They know perfectly well how good-natured he is. <laughs> Ah, my friends, what a wonderful, exciting day. I've just spent a couple of hours with Herr Goethe. What does he say? Was he pleased with your music for Egmont? Mm -hmm. well, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch what you said. I'm not hearing well today. Here, take the notebook. Was hmm? he pleased with yeah? your music for Egmont? Oh, oh, yes, Egmont. He said the way I treated it was inspired. The work of a genius. Goethe must have been more than a little surprised oh. by the tempestuous nature of our friend here. He himself has become a calm and balanced genius. You know, I've always been passionately fond of Goethe's poetry. It makes me happy. Oh, how patient he was with me. What a lot of good he has done me. He was above all polite, I'd say. Beethoven's violent nature must have hurt him more than once. What a symbol. Germany's two greatest living geniuses talking to each other and neither understanding the other. Is it 
true mm? Mm? that while you were walking with Goethe, uh -huh. a procession of people from the court, including the emperor and the uh -huh. empress, mm? came in your direction mm. and you refused to make way for them. <laughs> make way for them? <laughs> well, why on earth should I? Oh, kings and princes can appoint professors and counsellors and they can load them with titles and decorations, but they can't make great men of them, men whose minds soar above the rest of humanity. So when two men like Goethe and myself are together, well, these high and mighty gentlemen have, have got to realize just who we are. My dear Stefan, Archduke Rudolf presented me to kings and queens, emperors and empresses. I am hailed as Germany's greatest musician, but I'm more lonely than ever. His Highness wants me to stay with him, but my art has just as strong a claim on me. Sometimes I'm at Schönbrunnen, Sometimes I'm here. But even from the artistic point of view, I can't help feeling worried about all this fame, which I don't really deserve. Happiness seems to be just round the corner, which makes me all the more afraid of meeting misfortune. this cabbage leaf dares to say. Cabbage leaf? Oh, the musical gazette. Let me see. Apparently, even the best sources dry up. Mm. Can Herr Beethoven no longer compose? Have we got to wait for Italy to... Mm. It's a bit hard. Mm, what? What did you say? I said it's a bit hard. No, no, no. Write it down, please. Uh, on appearances, they're right. Right? It's eight years... Very nearly eight years since your eighth symphony mm -hmm. was performed. There's been nothing since apart from mm -hmm. a few sonatas. There's nothing apart from a few sonatas? Nothing apart from a few sonatas? What do you know, you worthless good for nothing? What do you know of the, the mind and the inspiration? The musical training and the long years of study. Oh, Uncle, please don't go on like that. I know very well. What do you I've... think you know? It's, it's almost ten years now since I snatched you out of the claws of a disgraceful mother to try and make a man out of you. 
I've made sacrifices. I'm, I'm poor because I've tried to give you an education worthy of myself. Yes, I know, Uncle. You you love me too yeah, well. All I get it is, is the me. blackest ingratitude. You poured on me, poor orphan that I was, all the love that you had in this world. You're a world right. from which you're cut off because of your yes, death. Yes, a miserable good for nothing. I'm too small for such a All you can do is love. to bring my work to scorn and derision. Oh, no, Uncle. How can I raise myself up to your level? And I wanted to be like a father to you. With all my heart, I wanted to be a father to you. Oh, no, no. My misfortunes will never come to an end. Tell me, Schubert, are we certain to see the master? Yes, of course we are. He spends all his days in the forest nearby and has his meals here. That is when he's not in the Archbishop's library, studying plain song and chants for his solemn mass. Anything is within his power. He's not only the most advanced and the richest of us all, he's also the most courageous. We can't understand everything he writes. To do so, we would have to have as great a mind and as great a heart as he has. Franz, what enthusiasm. Oh, you can laugh. Didn't you tell everybody that he'd said you were a devil of a fellow? You were pretty pleased, weren't you? <laughs> yes, you're right. He is the greatest of us all. But isn't that him over there? Yes, it is. Look, when he's alone, his face is all lit up. He's just been for a long walk in his beloved nature. He's found new themes. He's happy. His meditation, the musical universe he carries around with him, allow him to overcome men's mediocrity, suffering, his own destiny even. Let us leave him to himself. must make the flames spurt from the fire of men's minds. Music is a higher revelation than all wisdom and all philosophy. Whoever penetrates the meaning of my music will be freed from the torments that afflict other men, my brothers. <laughs> 